California to New York. Now, while California was getting it off on the minimum wage law and continuing to destroy what they had going over there with Gavin Newsom, New York was working their own magic. Shout out to Eric Adams, the other bad mayor, uh, another bad mayor inside of the United States of America. <laughs> New York was busy making sure that gig workers make $20 an hour minimum. It's like 1956 or 1979. I don't know why they came up with them weird numbers. But New York was doing the same thing, but on the flip side. So whereas California... Gig workers have to now deliver the food from the McDonald's and stuff that's paying the workers $20 an hour, and they got to get it out the mud as 1099s. New York is saying, listen, we want to pay our gig workers and not the minimum wage to, to make the food for the fast food, but now we want to make sure that the gig workers is making at least $20 an hour from the companies. We want to switch them over from being 1099s to actually being employees. <laughs> The two worst cities in the United States of America. Uh, make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Let's get to it. Special delivery. The customer wants a hot meal quickly. The delivery workers watching the clock on the job for one of the app-based food platforms. As of Monday, the hourly rate when they're actively delivering orders in the boroughs is now $19.56 an hour. That's nearly three times, the city says, what it was before. There's been a significant wage increase. $16 million is going into the pockets of app delivery workers on a weekly basis. That's huge. Some delivery workers came to City Hall Monday to be with Mayor Adams. The first of its kind minimum pay rate for app-based delivery workers was created by City Council legislation and the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection. The commissioner says the companies submit reports and numbers and the city is watching the impact. It's really working out. The workers are making more money as they should to get a dignified pay rate. The restaurants are not seeing less deliveries. The consumers are not spending more money. The apps such as DoorDash, Grubhub and Uber Eats pay delivery workers. Some restaurants say customers are seeing increased costs and that's hurting business. No, the customer pay uh, two, three dollars more per order, uh, I believe. Uh, that caused us to have less customers. It's, isn't it always funny when you see the legislator say, and that's not hurting business at all, and then they switch over to the business owner, and the business owner is all afraid, and their hair is all wet, and they sweating, and they confused about what's going on, and they losing sleep at night, and they're like, listen, man, less orders is coming in, less money, we got to charge the consumers more, blah, 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 blah. The business owners is always afraid. They always like, oh, my God, you can see their hair up in there. Most owners of businesses work at the business. It's not just a passive income and nothing like that. Most of them are involved with their business. Over 90 something percent of owners are participating in their own business. They work at the business that they're also employing other people at. Okay. And the business owners be like, ah, they not like an hour. And in the legislators, they had their makeup done, hair done, nails done, everything, did, 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 hair done, nails done, everything. Oh, you fancy, huh? Oh, you fancy, huh? Yep. Yes, this is not affecting the businesses at all, but we're making sure that the gig workers are getting all of their monies. And you know who's going to pay for it? You. And you know who's going to suffer for it? You. And then y'all keep asking me, Anton, why is inflation so high? Well, Pop Rice on Union Turnpike. Staff members rely on the apps to connect with customers and deliver the food. The owner is willing to pay a fee for that service, but he says orders are down since the pay went up. This is a burden to our customers. They can no longer enjoy the ease and affordability from the. And, and the rent gonna go up, cause you know they rent in the spot and they gotta maintain the equipment and they gotta pay extra taxes and they gotta pay insurance. They got to pay all of these things in order to stay in the business. But Eric Adams spoke on this and he gave his thoughts. He gave his speech. And so we want to see what Eric Adams says. Hopefully he's not reading. Now we know that Eric Adams, 
I personally have suspected, now I can't prove this, um, but based off of the things that I'm seeing, and thank you guys for continuing to, to contribute into the show. I appreciate you. You guys keep this popping. I'm going to read y'all Super Chat shortly. Um, Eric Adams, I have not, I've seen him read before. I don't know if he was just having a bad day. The couple times that I've seen him read, I don't know if, you know, the lawsuits that he's, he's fighting from 30 years ago is affecting him. But I've largely, largely suspected that Eric Adams may be a little bit autistic. I've seen these same symptoms. And uh, man, man. I did. Man, man. i seen man, man growing up. And I said, man. Have y'all ever took man, man to the doctor to get him tested? Because every time that they tell him to read in front of the class, don't look like he getting no better. Look like he just not a strong reader. You know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all said he's dyslexic. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let me see what the difference is between being dyslexic. Before we get into his speech, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I thought he was autistic, but y'all said he dyslexic. Dyslexia is a learning disorder that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how they relate to other words, called decoding, Auto, also called a reading. I knew it. I knew it. See, I, I, I ain't crazy. I'm not crazy. I know that that's not autism. It's dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, tell me this ain't the greatest country in the world where a man that's dyslexic can become the mayor of New York City and he could be managing multi-billion dollar budgets to determine the course of action in your life and your life and your life. Tell me, tell me that we don't live in the greatest country on earth where a dyslexic mayor can be running in the largest city in the United States of America. I say give it up for the United States of America. I'm not being mean. Y'all said that he said it. Anyways, let's get into what Eric Adams had to say about it. We want to hear his speech, all right? My name is Vilda Vera Mayuga, Commissioner of the New York City. I don't want to hear her. You're the older? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> you know that they automatically lean over. I was the same way with my mother. <laughs> Who's older? You're the older? <laughs> so this is your little brother. Love it, love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, important uh, a day today and to uh, all those who are here that come in the spirit of A. Philip Randolph. He was an African-American Pullman porter who fought uh, for increases in wages. So there's a long, rich tradition <clears throat> of those who are in the field uh, work harder so the next generations in the profession are able uh, to ensure that they can take care of, of their families. And that's what these pioneers are, the men and women who are uh, behind us. They fought for so long, and I remember from time to time going uh, to uh, locales where they've lost uh, some of their colleagues from being struck by vehicles. Uh, and I also remember during COVID-19 uh, when we had many people who were able to social distance, people who were able to shelter in place uh, that was a foreign term terminology to the men and women who stand behind us. They could not shelter in, in place. When you picked up the... Yeah, he's not that great of a reader. I don't know if he's reading right now, um, but they just, they, they just need to give him an outline. You know what I'm saying? So he, he does trip up his words a lot, but we're going to try to ignore that part. We're not focused on whether or not he trip up his words or not. We just going to rock out, y'all. Phone and you call for Uber Eats, it did not fall out of the sky from the food god. It came from these men and women who are behind us. They delivered to you. They made sure that you were able to provide for your family. And today we're saying we are standing up for you so you can provide for your family. This is an amazing, amazing accomplishment by this administration. And I really want to thank you, Commissioner, for your dogmatic approach to it. Uh, no matter what the uh, delivery or the apps workers were attempting to do, we were focused and our North Star was to make sure that these families got what they deserve. And having 
the ever presence uh, advocate of uh, four working class peace people, uh, Assemblywoman Jennifer Rajkumar. It's good to see you here today as we talk about this important piece of legis legislation. Day one, our administration has been clear, and I'm going to say it over and over again, pu protect public safety, uh, revitalize our economy, and make this city more livable for everyday New Yorkers. And those are the New Yorkers who are standing next to us today, working class people who for far too long fe felt the Shout vision out to of Love the city. C was leaving them behind. And we are delivering on this vision every day. We've recovered all the private sector jobs lost during the pandemic. And these are the types of jobs we're talking about. We know crime is down, it's gonna to continue to go down and our city is getting cleaner and greener. But we know that our economic recovery, recovery has not impacted every Let's stay focused, y'all. Everyone. And it has not benefited everyone equitably. And that is what we are focusing on during this time. We're doing everything we can to make sure New York City remains a city for working class people. Many of these big cities you are witnessing over and over again are slowly pushing out working class people. And we're going to do everything in our powers to make this a city of working class people. That is why we will continue to make sure New York City remains a city where you can live and grow and raise a family. And today, we're doing exactly that as we celebrate another victory for working people of our city. A well-deserved pay raise for app-based food delivery workers. Our delivery workers have consistently delivered for us, and today, we are delivering for them. We are leading the nation with this announcement of ensuring that they can receive a suitable uh, pay that they deserve in this process. We know that wages have not kept up with the rising cost of living in the city and everywhere we can make an impact, we're going to do just that. And so when things get tough, we must invest in our most valued asset and that is our people. We depend on our app, de app delivery workers to deliver our food 24 seven. You wake up in the middle of the night and you want something to munch on, you can call delivery workers. Many of people don't realize when we legalize marijuana, people get the munchies, and so they will call any time of the day to get food delivered to them. And during the Let me play that again for y'all. I'm going to play it again for y'all, for y'all in the back. Jesus Christ. You call delivery workers. Many of people don't realize when we legalize marijuana, people get the munchies. And so they will call any time of the day to get food delivered to them. And during the pandemic, we saw what happened. This is the mayor of the largest city in the United States of America, largely considered the capital of the United States of America, not officially, but largely considered the capital of the United States of America. This is the mayor of New York. What a multi-billion dollar budget. What the heck are we witnessing right here? Oh, God, Lord, help us, Jesus. These are the people that's creating our laws. These are the people that's representing us. They, I, I know people that be watching this from overseas be like, what's wrong with America? What is wrong with America? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's see how much more we can get through with this, y'all. What happened and what was done. Now, delivery workers who work for Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub will receive at least $19.56 per hour. That's crazy. Yes, yeah, you can clap to that. <laughs> and that is $19.56 per hour before tips. Listen, we know the games that are being played uh, to take away the tips, but we're saying let's stop those games. Let's make sure these delivery workers are able to get their tips. And I'm saying to you New Yorkers that 
$1.56 is a starting place. If someone is delivering to your home, make sure you deliver them in a suitable amount, no matter what games the uh, app based companies are attempting to play and city council we need to look at those games and make sure we fix the process they deserve their nineteen dollars and fifty six cents and they deserve their tips and see now now you put me between a rock and a hard place honestly honestly because look i am a person that believes and i tip regularly all day every day i pay $3,600 per parking spot for, for my parking spots um, at, my spa at one of my spaces at the, at the condo, which means that I'm paying $7,200 extra per year on top of whatever it is that I'm paying for my spot. And guess what? Every single time I come out, I make sure that I look out for the girl. I look out for the girl so much, she says, Anton, Anton, I'm graduating. And I say, oh, yeah, she says, and I'm going to buy a car with your tip money. So I believe in me personally choosing to. Now, they make a sufficient amount of money to where we don't, but she keep me informed and she let me know who coming and going in the building and who, who signed up and who taking the tour. She let me know everything. So I believe that is worth, worth the investment. However, you're making it very difficult for me because I can't sit here and say, well, it's okay for you guys, or hey, why y'all not tipping? Are these people have to depend on it because they're only making so much per hour. They're only making $3 an hour, $2 an hour, $5 an hour, whatever the minimum wage is for, you know, workers that serve you food and stuff. If you're making $20 an hour, why I got to tip you? If you're making $20 per hour, you making $20 an hour, and you telling me I got a tip? Now, see, I can well, no, 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 no. This is what y'all asked for. This is what y'all asked for. When I argue with people, when I said, hey, y'all, we got to take care of the people. We got to take care of the gig workers. We got to take care of the servers and all of this. Y'all y'all said, this is what you said. You said, we cheat. Shout out to the immigrants. Yeah, the Africans. Africans is notorious. Nigerians, notorious for saying, mm mm, I don't tip. I pay for the service. And so this is how I'm rocking. No, this is what y'all asked for, right? Whenever I would have a conversation with people and we would do panels and they would call in and they would go back and forth, they say, Anton, you're wrong. And then I go back and I read the comments just to see what the sentiment is. Half of the people are like, hey, man, we got to take care of the people. Other half of the people are like, mm, your fault. You should have chose a job that paid better. Or the, or the job should have paid a livable wage. Right? Right? So now the fares is going up. The delivery fees is growing up. And you're going to have to not. And so now you ain't got a tip because you got to pay them $20 an hour. And they're going to pass that cost over to the consumer. So everybody wins, right? <laughs> everybody wins, right? Now. Since, since burgers and, and fries is going to cost you $30 plus a delivery fee, now you don't have to worry about it because this is the argument that you advocated for. So everybody run over to New York and y'all all go do what y'all got to do because we ain't got to worry about it no more. Just don't ask for nothing. Don't ask for nothing. Don't ask for one extra rent cent. Don't sit there and say, turn the little thing around to me and do like this. Hey, um... So go ahead, you can complete your transaction there. And then the first thing that pop up on the screen is 15, 20, 25% or other. So they just turn it to you and then you're supposed to just hit the thing because you pay with Apple Pay. <laughs> now we ain't got to talk about it no more. Don't have to worry about it. Now everybody should be happy, right? <laughs> Don't ask for nothing. Now I may still tip, but that's my choice. Don't sit here and, and complain about it because this is the stuff that y'all advocated for. You wanted to be in a space and you said, well, only these jazz would pay people a livable wage. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Gotcha. We good. We all on the same page. Everybody is rocking the same boat. We rocking. Shout out to New York City and California and California for making sure that they take care of the business.